Well, God bless you. Amen. It's another day that the Lord has made. And the Bible says, let us rejoice and be glad therein. So we're thanking God for you and your family and your loved ones and thanking God for the members of Kingdom Faith International Christian Center. I want to say hello to you all. And we miss you guys. Hope to see you soon. Uh, in the meantime, this is the way we're connecting. This is the way we're rolling and getting things done. So we're just excited about what God's doing concerning his word of faith that he's given us as believers. Because truly we've been tested in this time that we're learning how to walk by faith and uh, not by sight alone. And that faith is basically having information, intellectual information concerning God's word and knowing that God's word is trustworthy and we can believe it and hold on to it. And even when we can't see our way, I mean, he's already uh, pro, pro, uh, already given us a word that we can learn how to walk in because that's what hope is. Hope is expectation for favor of change. So again, this is another day. Amen. Uh, this is probably the last Sunday of this month. And uh, we're excited. Amen. Because we know that God is still on the throne and he's still moving and working on our behalf. He may not be doing it the way you think he needs to be doing it or the way you want him to be to do it, but he's still in charge and he's still doing the things that are necessary that need to be done in our life on a day-to-day -day basis as we learn how to trust in him. Amen. So also, I just want to remind you guys in the footnote, um, next Sunday, uh, when we do our broadcast, it's going to be done a little earlier. It's going to be done at 9 a.m. So uh, we just want to make you uh, aware of that. So you, this is scheduling changes on my end. So that's why we're doing that. So uh, we just want you to be mindful of that uh, uh, in Jesus name. So uh, thank you so much again for you guys just uh, being faithful I hope you're growing. I hope you're taking the word of God and applying it to your life and uh, paying attention. Amen. Because this is a time where we can't be slowful or sleep or not being aware of what God is saying to us as believers. And I believe, amen, God is speaking very loudly today, especially getting our attention to stop the pause to reflect and to understand what God is trying to say as we position ourselves to guard ourselves from fear, doubt and unbelief. So again, we want to remind you guys also that um, we've been doing a series here. So we want to make sure that you are, are in tune with what we're doing. So if you didn't get all the series, this is we, today we're going to be doing with part four. So if you didn't get a chance to um, uh, listen to the previous message that we have uh, ministered, you can just go to our webpage, www.kficc.com and look for the uh, video or message button. And then download all the messages on video that there for you. So I think that's very good that God's given us to have that uh, ability to to yet glean from the word and it be recorded. And somebody else can actually review it later. Uh, so that's a privilege that God's given. So I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Uh, I want you to get your Bible, amen, electronic devices, wherever you need. We get ready to explore, with, see what the word of God is saying, amen, through our prayer time uh, and interceding and trying to get our ear to hear what God is saying uh, unto us as the church. Amen. So again, thank you guys. We're excited. Amen. Hope you're excited. Hope you're staying safe. Hope you're praying for one another, praying for us at Pastor Teresa and myself. And and we're just uh, learning how to do things differently. And it's a good thing because God is just stretching us to do that. So let's pray and we get right into the word of God today. And again, we want to thank God for all those who are partnering with us. Uh, we appreciate you being a partner with us. If you need more information, uh, concerning the ministry, you can always, uh, as I said, go to our website, amen, send us a message, amen, and we'll be able to uh, send you some information back concerning the ministry if you need to add any questions. Okay, well, let's pray and let's get right into the Word of God today. Amen. Thank you. Father, we just want to honor your presence and thank you for this time that you've given us as kings and priests that are called by your name. Uh, you said in your word that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we thank you, Father, that your mouthpiece, amen, has been your son, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we pray even now in Jesus' name that you bless our time together, bless those who are listening, even the young people, that you touch them in a way that they can receive a word to apply it to their heart, amen, and their mouth, their, also their walk. And we ask that you would give us a word that would help navigate us through these troubled times, Lord. So I yield myself to the ministry of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take this vessel of clay, use it for the glory of God. And Lord, we forever thank you and give you praise for these things being done. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. All right. All right. So remember, amen, just a, a reminder that we've been doing a series here, unfolding over, unfolding the fellowship of, our, of the mystery in reference to our relationship with God. 
And that's the way God, amen, just put it in my heart to share it with you. Uh, our, our scripture verse that we started out with was found in Ephesians chapter number three. Um, if you want to turn there with me, we'll just start out reading that and then I'll elaborate again about what we've already covered and then cover some new territory that God's given us today. Uh, so in Ephesians chapter number three and uh, verse number um, verse number, I think I said uh, one. Yeah, verse number one, one through nine. It says here, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, for if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to you to meet you word, it says how by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote in a, four, in a few words, Where, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which is in other ages was not known unto the son of men, but is now revealed unto us by the holy apostles and the prophets by the spirit. And it says that you Gentiles should be fellow heirs. And that's a key point. Gentiles be fellow heirs and the same, same of the body and the, of the body and the partakers of his promises in Christ's gospel. This is wherefore I have made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am least than the least of all saints is the grace given that i should preach among the gentiles the unsearchable reaches of the christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which has begin of the beginning of the world have been hidden god and who has created in things by jesus christ so again paul is writing this to the church of Ephesus, the word church in the Greek means ecclesia, means called out ones. And then he's talking about his assignment to the Gentiles is to read. The Bible even says, how should they hear without a preacher? How should a preacher preach except he be sent? So here he's saying my apostle is a sent one. So he said my assignment was to the Gentiles to reveal to them uh, the riches and also the uh, mystery that's found in Christ. And because of that alone, it's even speaking to us today that it's still a mystery to those who have even, even received Christ, uh, the mystery in terms of things that we should be flowing in as believers. So therefore, I took in the, the format of sharing with you uh, uh, seven things that I think that are important uh, in terms of our understanding the, the fellowship of our uh, uh, fellowship in terms of the mystery of Christ being within us. Remember, the Bible said the mystery is Christ in us, the hope of glory. And God, by his spirit, he wants to unveil the mystery to us individually to understand how to appropriate ourselves or how to position ourselves in these seven topics that we've been talking about. One, we talked about receiving Christ. Uh, two, we talked about being born in the grace of Christ. Three, we talked about spiritual growth. Uh, four, we talked about spiritual warfare. Um, and then five, we talked about uh, praise. And today we're going to be talking about uh, worship. Today we're going to be talking about worship. Worship today. All right. So in the, the word worship um, is uh, uh, in the Hebrew, both in the Hebrew and the Greek means to fall down or bow before God in homage. That's what the word worship mean in the Hebrew or the Greek. Now, worship is a reverence paid to a divine being, uh, giving glory, which we now that divine being, we know is God the Father through the Son, giving glory and praise and honor and thanksgiving due to him, both for who he is and what he's done. Now, in the word, this word worship is mentioned in the Bible 8,629 times. You can see how important that is. It's mentioned 8,629 times in the Bible. Amen. Uh, the first mention of this word worship worship, in the Bible was found in Genesis chapter number 22 in church, verse number 5. Now, you don't have to turn there, but when I begin to mention what this uh, chapter is talking about, it will uh, kind of jog your memory, but also in your Bible, um, Bible study this time this week, you can also look at that scripture and go a little deeper in that. So in Genesis 25, uh, 22, Genesis 22 and 5 is the first time we see the word uh, word worship mentioned in the Bible. And this word worship had to deal with Abraham, amen, reverencing God and reverencing God is to fear God, but not, not to fear, fear in terms of torment, but fear in terms of respect. 
And that's think that's important because sometimes sometime people don't understand that God is not a tyrant. He's not trying to force us to do things, but we do it out of our love commitment that we have with him. So here it says, Abraham honored and reverenced God. Amen. Because what he did was God asked him to offer up his son, his only son, his son. Amen. That him and Sarah, amen, was the promised son that God gave him. And God, the Bible says that Abraham, amen, got a word from the Lord and told him to offer up his son. So he went to go worship. He went to go worship. I think that's important because when you get in the heart of worship, because worship can take on many forms in terms of how we worship. But when we talk about the heart of worship, amen, that's, that's our platform for how we minister and how we worship the God from that platform. So that's important as we begin to move a little further. We explain that how important that is because a lot of people are worshiping God, but they don't have the heart for the worship. And because they don't have the heart for the worship, which we explain what that means as we move a little bit further. So here in the Old Testament, amen, Abraham is going to worship, amen, and the worship has to deal with his internal being in terms of his spirit and reverence to God, amen. So first of all, having knowledge of God, and also not only knowledge of God, but also respect in terms of who God is. And then thirdly, understanding what is required from him in the worship. Now, God tells him to offer up his son, Isaac, and he begins to go up to this mountain. And somebody asked him, amen, his son asked him, said, well, when we go to worship, amen, we always did this. We always built an altar. And not only we built the altar, we also put a sacrifice on that altar. And then also we, we allow, amen, to, that be given to God. And then God will consume it, amen, by his manifestation in terms of burning up or put fire there on the altar. Now, as we move a little bit further, amen, uh, so we understand that Abraham is going to actually worship. But someone once said that worship is simply love responding to God. Worship is love responding to God. Remember, we're talking about the heart of worship because some people think worship is just you singing. That's a part of worship. But when you get into the heart of worship, it's going to proceed everything from that because it has to come out of the heart. Amen. Because if the heart is not right in terms of worship, it's not really truly worship. So here it says, it says someone once said that worship is simply love and responding to, 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 to love. Love responding to love obedience now i'm going to say this point because what worship is going to magnify more than anything when you get in the heart of worship it's going to magnify what level of obedience do you have obedience is the highest form of worship obedience is the highest form of worship so when you get into worship in the heart of worship it's really in terms of submission in terms of the person's heart or spirit. So here it says obedience is the highest form of worship. Love now is a choice. So remember, you have to choose to serve. Amen. We don't serve God out of fear. We don't serve God because he's a tyrant and all that. No, we serve God out of respect to who he is. Amen. Because he is God. Not only that, we serve God out of respect to what he's done for us, what he's doing for us. And that's actually what he's doing even in us even right now. So Abraham is taking that, that mindset that he understands that everything he has, God has given it to him. Therefore, he is a steward of everything, but not he's not an owner. He doesn't own it. Amen. God is the owner of everything, but we're the steward of everything, owners of nothing. So he knows that what God has asked of him is a hard thing. But out of Abraham's love and respect to God, and really, really where it made it a little bit easier for him, he believed that God was going to raise his son up because God promised him that son. And therefore, he was going to see that that thing be fulfilled. Now, if you read the scripture, you'll find out that Abraham didn't have to actually kill Isaac because what happened was there was a ram in the bush. So God was just testing his level of worship in terms of his obedience, in terms of his choice. And also a choice leads to obedience and then obedience, out of obedience, amen, we have reverence. Reverence is when we submit, amen, or display our actions in submission to the power of God's sovereignty. And that's a par powerful 
uh, in ter uh, proper definition because it's talking about our actions in submitting to the power of God's sovereignty, amen, in terms of having a heart of worship. Remember, we're talking about worship today. Now, the word sovereignty in the Bible, amen, points to God the Father being the supreme power and having the authority of not only heaven, but also an, an earth. Not only that, but God has also transferred that power unto his son. When, remember when Jesus, amen, met with his the disciples from the last, I think it was Matthew 28, he said, all power in heaven is given unto me and given unto him. It's been transferred now unto the son of God, which is Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Say so again, that's a form of worship also. So here it talks about, amen, again, let me repeat myself. Love is a choice. Out of that choice, we have now obedience. Obedience leads us now to reverencing God. To reverencing God is now a display of our actions in submitting, amen, to the power of God's sovereignty. Now, the word sovereignty, in, it points to God the Father being the supreme power and authority. You talked about that. Let's look at some scriptures, amen, or scripture that's, that kind of verify what we're talking about. Let's go to Psalms 96, Psalms 96 and verse 4 through 9, and that's Psalms 96, verse 4 through 9, and we're going to look at this in the Amplified Bible, amen. In Psalms 96, amen, verses 4, amen, and, and also through 9, so we're just going to read that. So here it says in Psalms 96, verse number 4. Four, Psalms 96 and 4 in the Amplified, this is for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Last week we were talking about praise. Remember praise? Mm -hmm. Remember praise? When we praise, we put God first. <laughs> Amen. So we're acknowledging him. So not only that, but he, it says he is to be reverently feared. I mean, that fear is not uh, the fear that we, the fear is in submission and obedience to who he is. So as Sarah said, he is uh, to be uh, 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 reverently feared and worshiped above all so-called gods. So now it went from reverence in God to worship. And all that's tied together. Because remember, we talked about that. I don't need to repeat that. But we talked about reverence. I just mentioned that. This plays our actions in submission. So again, here it says that we, we do that out of a choice of understanding that who God is. And therefore, that's why the psalmist says, for great is the Lord, because he knows who he is and that and all that, but greatly to be praised because he understands he deserves the praise. Then he says he is to be reverent, uh, in reverence, it's in reverence to, in other words, we should be reverencing him. And not only that, but worship above all so-called gods. It says for all the gods of the nations, are lifeless idols, it says here, but the Lord made the heavens. Then it says, honor and majesty are before him and strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Then it goes in, ascribe to the Lord. It says, O ye families of the people, ascribe to the Lord, the Lord of glory and strength. Give, it says, give to the Lord the glory due to his name and bring an offering and come before him in his courts. And it says, oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, trembling, it says, before him, reverently fearing him, all the earth. All this points to the sovereignty of God because it talks about, one, that he is the Lord. That means he has a supreme authority and power over all things. Remember, God created, he is a speaking spirit, but God created the heavens and the earth. If you've tracked the Bible, amen, it begins to show you, amen, through scriptures that, amen, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Now, also, it begins to point out to the fact, as we look at this, amen, that not only that he's the Lord, but he's the Lord above all gods. And it says the gods, amen, these gods, amen, that are in the nation are lifeless and idols, amen. It's not the true God because the true God has the power to create. These gods have no power to create, amen. It's just subject, subjects or idols that they put in their mind, things that they serve, amen. So then there again, we don't want to get into all that, but again, again, it goes into honor and majesty before him. So that's talking about ascribing, amen, to God and acknowledging him for who he is. So this is all powerful because we're again, 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 what we're talking about is the heart of worship, amen, in terms of us as believers when we unfold the mystery 
of Christ in us, the hope of glory, amen, these things that we've been talking about is something that we have to learn how to develop and understand and also operate in because there's a lot of confusion that's going on in terms of what worship is. But today we're talking about the heart of worship because without the heart of worship, everything else is in vain because you're not really worshiping the way God has designed us to worship if it's not coming truly from the heart or your spirit first. Now let's go over to uh, the, the New Testament is where we go. So worship is something that we do. Worship is just like praise. Praise is something that we do. Well, worship is something that we do. You can't be a spectator when it comes to worshiping. Amen. Because worshiping, amen, again, it reveals, amen, your love or your choice or your obedience and reverencing God. And out of your actions, amen, in terms of you laying prostrate before him, honoring him, giving him the glory that's due unto his day, puts him in his rightful place. He's going to be in his rightful place whether you put him there or not. But it's also a good thing to serve and to worship the Lord. I hope you're getting something out of this day. And John chapter number four, uh, you don't have to turn there, but if you can just turn there, we're going to talk about some things in John chapter number four. Jesus, amen, is, uh, meets a woman at the well of Jacob, and then he sends his disciples into town to buy meat. Um, he's meeting a woman from Samaria. And he, when he meets this woman from Samaria, there's a dialogue that takes place. You know, he says, give me water, you know. And she said, well, who are you that, you know, asking me of water, you know, and it goes back and forth. But then he just tells her, you know, if you if you knew who I was and the gift, amen, that I had to you, I would give you living water. And, you know, and then she asked well, where this living water is. He said, the water that I give you should be in you, a well of water springing up to everlasting life. And as they begin to get this dialogue back and forth, you can see God, is, uh, Jesus is massaging her in terms of her intellect to move her to something that she thinks she knows, but she doesn't really know. And then she gets on the, down to the fact, reveals to her that she has a, a, a five husbands and the husband when she with is not her husband. She said, well, I perceive that you're a prophet, you know. So then she gets on and says something I think is very, very important because they're going to be talking about worship here in just a minute. So if you go over to, uh, we talked about John chapter number four, uh, just look at the 19th verse. He says, the woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. In other words, you didn't got in my business. You didn't reveal who I am, what I am, what I do. So now she says, you know what? It's time to change this subject. <laughs> Glory to God. So now she gets spiritual. She begins to say, you know, I perceive that you are a prophet. And then she says, our fathers in the 21st, our fathers worship in this mountain. And you say in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Now, listen, this is important because what's going to happen here, the dispensation of worship that we found in Abraham, him bringing something to God, as showing his obedience to God. Amen. Now it's going to change because Jesus is going to bring forth a new dispensation. The word dispensation, when God has finger in time, where he makes an emphasis, and that emphasis is where he puts his power, he makes his, his evidence of his strength and instructions. But now because of Jesus in the New Testament, the do dispensation, he's getting ready to change the dispensation of what Abraham did and now make it into something new. Amen. So that's important. I hope you hear that and hope you can follow on with that. So now in this dialogue, because the woman is talking about something that they have heard, amen, in terms of worship. She said, now worship, amen. Now we know that when you go to where you go to worship, she says, amen, you go to worship and it's on this mountain. So here it says here, Jesus, amen, is trying to let her know because what the woman is really trying to say is that the woman said, our fathers worship in this mountain. So now we're talking about traditions, traditions. So traditions are good, but sometimes traditions are not so good because some traditions can come sometimes lock you into a place of serving God out of tradition, but not out of relationship. Oh, that'll preach. My God. So, Sometimes we're serving God and that's what he's trying to let her know. You're serving God out of tradition, but you're not really serving God out of relationship. And it's not really their fault because it wasn't time for them to serve God out of relationship because the relationship had not come because the one who's going to bring that relationship is the one that's talking to her right now. And he's a person and his name is Jesus. Now it goes on to say here, amen, that she says, well, our, our father said we're worshiping this mountain and Jerusalem is the place. So now, now we have a mountain, a mountain, a location, but now you got to go into this place in order to worship. That Jesus responds to the woman to see what he says to her. He says here, woman, Jesus said to her in the 21st verse, 
uh, woman, believe me that the hour which shall, ne shall neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem uh, worship the Father. So now we can see in this statement, Jesus is declaring prophetically, I'm getting ready to worship that you've come to know and understand through tradition, I'm getting ready to change. I'm getting ready to change it. I'm getting ready to alter it. I'm getting ready to fulfill it. Amen. Because remember, if you look back, amen, at, at what happened with Abraham offering up his son, it was a prototype in terms of what God was going to do to bring completion to our worship. Because remember, worship, amen, has a lot to do with our understanding. And how I know that to be true, when Jesus said, tells her, amen, in the 21st verse, in the Amplified, let me read that in Amplified. It said, Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the time is coming when you will worship the Father, merely not in this mountain or in Jerusalem. And then he goes on to say, amen, in the 22nd verse, he said, you Samaritans, he said, you do not know what you worship. In other words, you do it out of tradition, but you don't have, my God, you do it out of, you do it out of religion because that's what you've been taught to do. But what I'm trying to t talk to you today is let you know that, that, that I'm going to give you understanding to what worship is because worship is not in a building. It's not in a place. It's in me. It's in the in Jesus, my God, it's through us understanding that Jesus is the ultimate totality of how we worship the Father, and it's through the Son. It's through the Son. Without the Son, there can be no worship. We, we my God, it's through the Son. I hope you're hearing that today. Now it says here, he said, you, I'm reading the 22nd verse in the F5, you Samaritans do not know what you are worshiping. You worship what you do not comprehend. That's important. He said, you're worshiping out of tradition but you don't worship out of understanding and revelation because the revelator hasn't came. I'm the revelator by my spirit through Jesus. We'll understand how to worship the father, how to worship the father, excuse me, in spirit and also in truth. Now it goes on to say here, we worship what we know the word Jesus said, we know what we, we know. Amen. We worship what we know and have knowledge of understanding and all that salvation comes through amongst ACS here, the Jews. So really Jesus, where he's, he's responding to the worship, responding to the lady, basically he's really trying to tell the woman in Samaritan, listen, you worship out of tradition and tradition doesn't cause you to have an understanding or to comprehend why you do what you do. You just do it because somebody told you to do it, but you don't have understanding to know why you do what you do. And because of that, Jesus said, uh, understand the why. He said, I'm the answer to that why. So now he's changing. Jesus is trying to inform this woman about the true meaning of worship. If you don't hear anything else in this message, you need to hear this, what I'm saying right now. Amen. The true meaning of worship. Because remember, with worship, amen, has to start. It has to start from our heart and our stall for our mind and our understanding in terms of who Jesus is. And that's what he's trying to tell this woman, even from the Matthew, I mean, even from John chapter number four, when he meets her at the, at the well, even all that discussion is bringing her down to this point. She brought up the subject. She said, you we perceive that you're a prophet. And, and she says, you know, Jerusalem is the place to worship. So worship, amen. We can look back on this just for a minute. We know that worship is not a place. Words, you can't have worship in a place and not any longer. He said, you used to, in a place, you can't worship, amen. When I say worship in a place, we're talking about where the heart, where you stimulate your worship from, amen. It's not going to stimulate from a place, amen. It's not in this mountain, neither is it in Jerusalem. Now he goes on to say, he says, but the hour cometh and now is, and this is the 23rd verse, the, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers, and this is interesting that he doesn't use the word just worship, but he says the true worshipers. And what he's simply saying is there are some people, amen, that are not going to receive, amen, the true knowledge of this dispensation changing, and they will still worship, but they won't be true worshipers because they haven't moved from the old to the new. Whoop, glory to God. And the move from the old to the new is to follow and track what Jesus is saying. Because Jesus is saying, listen, you used to worship, but you knew not what to worship. Amen. But now he's saying, I'm here to reveal to you who the Father is through the Son and through the relationship that you have with me. Amen. I'm going to show you how to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. It says here, but the hour comes now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit 
and in truth, not only just in their spirit, in their heart, but also in truth, in truth. And this, and that truth is who, who truth is a person and his name is Jesus. It says, for the father seek of such to what? To worship him. So it is talking about the father seek of those who worship, the true worshipers. So this is, this references in worshiping or the true worshiping. This is worship. He says what? In spirit and in truth. And he says, this is done through our understanding of our reality. Listen, this is done, amen, through our reality of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Now it gets to the point of spirit and truth lodging in the individual of the believer to understand these two things that you have received Jesus of Christ inside of you. And because you understand that, the reality of it is to come in relationship with that. Now, listen, I'm going to say some things that may, amen, upset you, but I'm hoping it won't, but I want you to follow along with me. Amen. So remember, so with the references in worship and spirit is done through our re understanding of the reality of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Now, in truth, we cannot worship. Listen, in truth, we cannot worship the father unless we have a true relationship with his son, Jesus Amen. Jesus, the relationship we need to have with God, the Father is given to us when we receive his son, Jesus, Jesus into our hearts or into our spirits. Now I'm going to read something. Amen. I'm going to look like I'm off track, but I'm not. If you just follow with me, you'll see where I'm going. Now, if that's straight, if that statement is true, amen, if that statement is true, which we just mentioned, amen, let me read it again. In truth, we cannot worship God the Father unless we have a true relationship a true relationship with him and the relationship we need to have with God the Father is given to us when we receive Jesus as his Jesus the son of God into our hearts or into our spirits now turn to 1 John chapter number 5 and verses 10 through 12 and we're going to read this in the amplified bible and this is again 1 John chapter number 5 verses 10 through 12 okay it says, he who believes in the Son of God, who, adhere, who adheres to, trusts in, and relies on him, and has the testimony possessed this divine attestment within himself. Listen, he has it within himself. Remember, we're talking about the true heart of worship starts within your spirit, amen, in your spirit, amen. We're not talking about all the attributes that come after worship, uh, liturgical worship and all that. We're talking about if you don't have this in your heart, that all the other things are just in vain. That's what he was telling the woman, amen. You've been taught through tradition how to worship, and it's not really your fault because it wasn't time, amen, for the son to come. Now Jesus is the son of God, and now because of him, him opening the door for us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise is through understanding our relationship with Jesus. So here it says here, he says again, he said, as we begin to read this again, excuse me, he says that, uh, uh, he who believes in the Son of God, who adheres or trusts in him or relies on him and, and have this, uh, adheres to him and trusts in him and relies on him, it says, has the testimony possessing this divine, the testament within himself. He does not, he who does not, he who does not, he who does not believe, it says here, he who does not believe in this way was made him out to be a representative of him as a liar. As he suppose he is, he has not believed and put his faith in and adhere to and rely on the evidence of the testimony that Jesus that God has borne and regard born regarding his son. So what he's simply here and saying here, this makes the distinction between when Jesus said the true worshipers, that he puts that emphasis on there because there are some people that are still going to worship God, but not worship him understanding that the worship has changed now. God is not looking for worshipers. He's looking for true worshipers. And the true worshipers reflected those who have the Son. Now, in this testimony, it says in the 11th verse, this testimony is, it said, and this is the testimony or the evidence that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Now, the 12th verse says, He who possesses the Son have life. He who possesses not the Son have not, does not have life. Now, the 13th verse, amen, let's read that. 
Amen. In 13th verse, I think I want to go there. Don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. No, let's stop there at the 12th verse. He who possesses the Son has life, and he that does not possess the Son of God does not have life. What well, that's talking about eternal life. Now, I can touch something right there. Uh, it's not really dealing with worship, but when you receive Jesus Christ, eternal life is already inside you. You don't try to obtain eternal life. Eternal, my God, oh, Lord, help me, Lord. I mean, you don't try to obtain eternal life. Amen. It's already been given to you through Jesus Christ. Amen. All you're trying to do is to what? Maintain what he's given you. You don't try to try to obtain what he's already given you. He's already given it inside of you. Now, I read all that in reference to understanding. So, so worship in this dispensation uh, uh, on Jesus is trying to let her know that the hour is come and now is that they that worship the Father, the true worship, shall worship him in spirit and in truth. So worship in this dispensation, we must give our full attention to God, the Father, through our relationship through Jesus Christ to establish an intimacy, an intimacy with God's plan and purpose for our life that's found in Jesus. Woo, glory, that'll preach, that'll preach, that'll preach. Woo, my God. I hope you're getting this. I'm getting excited myself just by reading the word. That's what the word of God, when you understand it's not talking to anybody, it's talking to you. And if you personally uh, receive the word and uh, ask God to give you revelation concerning what is he's trying to reveal to you, what he's trying to let us know that when the heart of worship is where it begins, the spirit in your heart is where it begins. If it doesn't start out right, truly it's not going to be received. Amen. It's going to get misdirected. So here, so, so to worship in this dispensation, we must give our full attention to God the Father through our relationship with Jesus Christ to establish an intimacy with God's plan and purpose for our lives that's found in Jesus. Remember, the Bible said he seeketh those who worship him. Oh, my, 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 my. Listen, God is on the seek. <laughs> God. He's seeking those who worship him in this dispensation of New Testament truth that's found in the truth when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life is found in Jesus. And when we receive him into our heart, now worship has already been established inside of us through the Son, but he needs our cooperation in submitting and giving honor and reference to who he is, and that's what we should do because of who he is and what he's done for us. So when we establish types of, of worship by spending time in prayer, I, 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 I've given, you can't get away from spending time in prayer. You got to quit asking God for things. There's nothing wrong. We need to do that. But there's a time where you just enter, in the, you enter, amen, and you enter in that place with God and you just be quiet before him or you worship him and you, and, or you praise him. It usually starts with praise. Praise leads us into worship. Praise leads us into his gates with thanksgiving and his court with praise. And then we go to that place of worship. And that place of worship is some places that some people haven't touched yet, but it's still made available for us. Amen. And which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. So again, when we are spending time, types of uh, uh uh, worship by spending times in prayer, uh, praise, deepening our commitment, our commitment, amen, our commitment with God, amen, our commitment with God is, is understanding that we need to uh, take out some time. How many know time is important? Amen. Time is the most valuable thing that we have. Some people say it's money. No, it ain't because you can have money, but when you have money and you run out of time, amen, you can't spend that money. So time is more valuable than anything. And the Bible says that we should redeem the time that we live in and use it wisely. Wisely, amen. In other, in other words, don't forget, amen, where God brought you from and don't forget that how you got there was through praise and worship. And then, you know what? Worship him, uh, amen, in the beauty of holiness, being separated unto him, making that commitment because that commitment, it, it has to deal with a choice, amen. And we choose, I still choose and after all these years, I still choose to worship him and honor him and thank him for who he is and who he is in me and what he's done in me and what he's doing for me. Amen. Because you know what? If you don't appreciate it, ain't nobody else going to appreciate it. That's not good English, but it's just true anyway. If you don't appreciate it, if you're looking for somebody to applaud you for something that you want to get confirmation on, then you didn't miss what I'm talking about because I'm talking about Christ in you, the hope of glory. And there's been a change, amen, in your heart, and in your mind, in your spirit. And now worship the, the, the present of worship inside of you. Amen. He's put his spirit inside of you. And now he wants you to cooperate with your intellect and your knowledge to understand that it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So therefore you take the time, amen, to worship, amen, and also commit yourself and become more passionate, amen, because you what you want, he's sick of those who seek of him. 
which simply means there's a response. Remember, love, worship is love responding to love. Worship is love responding to love. So when you love God and you worship him, he wants to respond back. How does God respond back to us? Because if he seeketh those who worship him, that means there's a reward system tied to our worship when we become passionate, intimate with God, committed to God, and not just looking to get our hands, amen, being blessed and things being blessed. But we just want to thank him for what he's doing inside of us. And, and because what that would take place, when that, that heart and our mind is lined up per, correctly in terms of the true worship, then what happens is how God rewards us, he rewards us with his presence. Ma, 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 ma. He rewards us with his presence. Amen. And in the, and, and the Bible says, in the presence, but the presence is, the presence brings joy. It brings peace. It brings comfort. It, re, it reveals his God's plan and purpose for our life. In the quietness of that place, he'll just reveal, pop things will pop up in your spirit. Got to show you things. I remember one time, I mean, I got a call from one of the mothers here in the city and one of the pastors, which was her son, he was sick. He was sick and, and he was up at the OSU University and uh, he was in the uh, affectionate disease uh, uh, ward and she wanted me to go up there and see him. And I never will forget, uh, before I went, I went to worship. Uh, before I went up there, I checked in first. I checked in to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because you know what? The veil has been torn down. The, Jesus had torn the veil down, amen, from my flesh to enter in because I can enter in by his spirit, in my spirit, to God's spirit, and glory to God. I just got in that place with God, and I said, God, I said, you know, and I laid before him, you know, I still lay before him today, amen. All these years, amen, my, my knees don't work as good as they used to, but thank God they're working, praise God. I still lay before him today, amen, and I ain't asking for no car, I ain't asking for no, listen, I still lay before him today because he's my father. He's my Lord. He's given me his savior, Jesus, his spirit inside of me. And I've come to worship. I come to seek him out so he can seek me out. Glory to God. And what happened is God just, his presence just came. And sometimes when God's presence came, God's plan will come. Amen. Sometimes when his presence come, amen. Amen. What happened is, amen. You can feel, amen, information coming. Amen. God giving you a word sometimes. Some God give you a vision sometimes in all that worship. So God spoke to me, said, go up there. He said, go, gave me the permission to go. I went up there in the name of Jesus. I didn't go there in Ron Harrison. I went in Ron Harrison, but I went in the name of Jesus. Glory, in the power that's found in his name. And I never forget when I went in the room to see him and he was a pastor. Now, I remember the church has been praying for him. He was crypt up in a, a, a fetal position in the bed. And when I entered in, I could feel, I could feel in the room, amen, amen, something just wasn't right. Glory to God. But when you know how to worship, when the true worshipers know how to worship, my God, we invite God. Amen. Because first of all, I started out praising God. And before I knew it, we got, got into worship and the atmosphere changed in the room. Glory to God. God. Amen. I looked over the bed. He had put his foot up out the bed, got out of the fetal position because, well, listen, when you can understand that God seeketh those who worship him, God, amen, he will begin to manifest his presence. And when his presence come, amen, he is altering everything that's contrary to his will and setting things right forth in the, concerning his will concerning us and our relationship with him. Without the relationship, how can you really worship God? We're just going through the motions. Amen. So he here we're talking about the heart of worship. I'm here to tell you that room, praise be to God, it got lit up in there because the God's presence began to come in the room. And for I know it, God starts speaking to him because when God's presence come, God begins to know us how to talk to you. And that's what we need. We need to enter into true worship. Amen. Not our traditional worship, but true worship out of our relationship. Get into the place of praising God thanking him for who he is. And not only that, but there's a place, amen, that when God knows your heart is right and you have really touched his heart, he comes to touch your heart. I'm here to tell you to testify, amen. If he was here today, he would tell you still the same. He's still living, he's still today. But we, I never will forget that. I never will forget that because when the presence of God comes, it alters, amen, and changes the atmosphere and makes it conducive to his will and not our own will. Anything that was in that room was not of God. When God's presence came, it had to exit, stage left or right. It didn't mean, it didn't matter. Let me tell you, when I got, when we got done, amen, I looked over, he had his hands raised. He had went from a fetal position, amen, to now worshiping God. His spirit got ignited. 
with the spirit and the presence of God, and God began to bring healing and manifestation. When God said he seeketh those who worship him, it's love responding to love because that's what worship is. And worship is something that you do. It's something that you do not become a spectator in. And if you're a spectator, you can never experience the presence of God working in your life the way he wants to work in it. Come, let us worship before the Lord God Almighty. I hope you're getting something out of it. I'm trying to calm myself down. My God, I tell you, amen, you need to raise your hands and say, Lord, help me to worship, amen, you in spirit and in truth, amen. We need that more now than ever, in spirit and in truth. Why? Because the Father, amen, he wants to commune with us. That's how he communes with us. When I went in that room, we got to worship. Let me, the thing that touched my heart was how much, what, what, what worship do, it calls the manifestation of God to come to alter and to change things. So let me tell you something. He walked, I walked in the room. He's in the bed. When I left, he's walking down the hall with me. Somebody say, Jesus is worthy to be praised. Amen. When we understand how to worship, amen, we begin to invoke God's presence. Someone once said, worship is the climax of praise. <laughs> Woo! Worship is the, con listen, worship is, is the climax of praise. Worship is the climax of praise. Praise should lead us to worship. We should see a manifestation of God working some kind of way. Listen, the aim in worship on our end is to seek God, and on God's end, he wants to reveal more of his grace and more of his presence. I'm almost done here. My time is almost up. But I need to read one more scripture. When God's manifest present, let's turn to Psalm 16 and 11. And then I'm going to stop right there. I hope y'all get something out of this. Because today we're talking about the true heart of worship, not the, all the other things that people can talk. I could took took many uh, roads in terms of talking about worship. We want to go to the to the, the heart of worship. Amen. In Psalm 16, I think I said that. Let's turn that real quick. And then my time is almost up. But this is a good word for you. I hope you're getting something out of this today. In Psalm 16. And verse number one, just that verse number 11, I'm sorry, Psalm 16 and 11. And I'm going to read this uh, out of the Amplified. It says, and you, shall show, and you shall show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. Mm, glory. It says, and you will show me the path of life. And in your presence is the fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there is pleasures forevermore. Listen, when God manifests his presence, he changes our attitude. He changes our, pers our perspective, pers perspective on things. God manifests his presence will change even our atmosphere. I hope you got something out of this. When you get a chance, read Psalms 46 and verse number 10. For time's sake, I'm not going to read that. Psalm 46 and 10. But I'm here to tell you, we're talking about the true, listen, the true worshipers. And we've explained what that was and what that is. And you're all part of that process. I hope you got something out of the word of faith today. I'm charged. I'm excited. Amen. Because I know that the, I have the ability to be that true worshiper in spirit, in truth, as we honor God the Father. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for these kings and priests that are called by your name. Thank you for this opportunity in our time together. Thank you for this word of faith that you've given us. You said you the true worshipers. You made a distinction upon that point. Jesus said that God, he, the true worshipers, they seek God the Father. We seek and we worship God in spirit and truth. And the Father seeketh those who worship him. And others love responding to love. Help us, amen, to get to that place of worship and practice worship and practice how to enter into that place that you have for us and reveal your plan and your purposes for our life even as we get into that worship by your spirit. Now, Lord, we thank you, give you praise, and thank you for our time together. In Jesus' name, we pray, and someone should say amen. Listen, if you have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, amen, we're giving you the opportunity, amen. You need, even today, God's giving you an opportunity to really help you understand that if you have not confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, that starts it, amen. That's the beginning. And if you have done that, if you haven't done that, you need, I will admonish you to do that. You really need to stop and say, Lord, I believe your record. I believe the Bible that Jesus is my savior and I repent. I give my heart to him and I ask him to come in my heart to save me from myself. And if you are sincere about that, and if you made that confession, amen, if you haven't made that confession, amen, you can do it today. You just, just even if you're by yourself, you just say, Lord, I believe that the Bible is true. I believe that Jesus is the son of God. 
And I believe that he died for my sins. He rose the third, third, third day from the grave and he's still alive today. So I ask that Jesus to come out and save me for myself. If you do that, there's information, amen, that we would like to send you to help complete that information that you need in terms of walking with the Lord. I hope you got something out of the word of faith today. I'm excited. I hope you're excited, amen, because God is seeking those who worship him in spirit and in truth. God bless you and we'll talk to you soon. Love you in Jesus' name, amen.